This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and we're gonna do a really short video today because been there, done that. Um, so I don't wanna overdo this. I just wanna show you the basics and get it going. So we're doing smoked cheese in the Big Chief front load smoker. Again, I'll pop up a link to another video which shows the process, which is a longer video, and you can see the whole thing. But here, we're just gonna cover the basics. So first thing, I'm gonna use a pellet tray for my smoke source. You can use a pellet tray or you could use a smoke chief generator, which would just mount on the side here with a drill one simple hole and you can pop it in and you don't even have to actually mount it. So here I put in a pellets for the amount of time I wanna smoke and then I put in a piece of a haystack lighter. So there's not a whole bundle of it and just once you get the hang of it, you'll know how much you need, and then you're gonna put some pellets over top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down here, and I'm gonna light it. We'll let this burn until it gets going really well. And just for this example, I'm just gonna set it in the back so that way it's not right in our face. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we'll go ahead and open up the smoker. And then we're gonna flip these bottom two shelves. So it needs to be at least the bottom, but it could be lower Such that like that, and this like this. So the idea is, is that we want to put this pellet tray in here where it's really close to the oxygen source, which is the door. And then we want to put this here to kind of disperse the smoke and also reduce the chance that the heat goes in a straight column. Now you could just slide it inside the door and, um, I don't like to set it on the element, but I have done it before and it's just fine. Next, we're gonna take a tray and I just happen to have a clean one right here. The other ones are all well seasoned and I don't think it's gonna matter for cheese. And we're gonna set a grill mat on there. You can use a generic one or you can use a Big Chief. Set that in there like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and start placing our cheese on there. I set it just like this. I'll lay a bunch of them in there and then I'll come along and reorganize it if need be. I like to put them on the side. My goal here is to get all the cheese on one rack so there's less rotating. If you have multiple racks of cheese, you're gonna have to flip it in the middle of the cooking process. Now I will take a look at the cheese later and see if it needs to be turned over but typically we can get through a smoking process without turning the cheese over. Something else I wanna note is that it is winter time. And so during the day we have a pretty cool temperature and also the creek provides us with a lot of cool air. So it will keep our actual temperature down very low. Um, we don't wanna go over 90 no matter what uh, with something like mozzarella your actual temperature would be closer to 80 where the cheese would melt. But if we can keep it under 60, that is perfect. Now let's take a look here and see how close we are. We are not quite there yet, but we are burning along. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. And when that's ready, I'll be back and I'll let you know how long it's been. So I think it's been about three minutes and I'm just gonna push a little bit of these pellets forward. And something that I did was I went ahead and grabbed the blowtorch. This is also a really good way to uh, light the pellet tray, but you have to spend some time with it to get it going. Now, the um, a regular torch like a uh, plumbing torch will work really good also, but with this, When you leave it outside, sometimes it doesn't light when you need it to. Oops.
So it's been just over five minutes. I spent a minute with the blowtorch on it and uh, it's simple. You're just gonna hit it like that and get it going. We also get a little bit of benefit of airflow down the creek, so it kind of keeps a little breeze on it. Some days better breeze than others. Now, the way you know it's ready, and I don't think it's quite ready yet, is by blowing it out and then seeing if you can get it to relight by blowing on it. So look at the smoke, we're right about there. That's so close. Now I'm gonna blow on it and see if I can get it to relight. And do you see it slid up again? It is so close to ready. It needs to be just a little stronger, but we are right there. I think we're ready to go in and it's been about six minutes or so. So let's go ahead and get this thing blown out and get the lid on. I mean the door. I'm just gonna slide this in right here. And if I don't like how it's performing, I'll move that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this tray up one just to give it a little bit better, more space, a little bit of room to work. Make any adjustments that you need to conveniently fit your pellet tray in there. Also, a pellet tube would work just fine, but you would wanna prop it up a little bit on one side to keep it so the opening is facing up that way pellets don't fall away as they burn and have it go out. Now you can see that it's smoking pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the door on here. Now that the door is on, there's one more thing we need to do. Open the wood chip pan door and keep it open. That way we're providing plenty of air to that pellet tray so it doesn't go out. Pellet trays will easily suffocate and they'll shut down. We're gonna go ahead and run this for about four hours or a little more for whatever the amount of pellets is in there. I'll come back and check on it in about two hours. And if those bars need to be flipped, then we'll flip them over. It's been a little bit over an hour and we're gonna go ahead and just flip the cheese. I'm not worried about whether it needs to be flipped or not. We're just gonna do it. And look at all that smoke come rolling out of there. It's smoking perfectly. That's what I really like about the amazing pellet smoker. Also, most of the generic ones will perform about the same. So don't stress out if it's out of stock or something. That's been a big issue lately with manufacturers being out of stock of just about anything that you try to buy when you want it. The battery just died, so I went ahead and uh, threw in a brand new fresh battery. So I hope we didn't miss anything really important but I went ahead and I flipped the cheese just to make sure that we were uh, gonna get a good even smoke layer on it and put the uh, door back on and made sure that I had propped open the wood chip door so that way we could get a good airflow. And you can see the smoke is just pouring out of here, which is what we want. We don't want the smoke to sit in there. We want it to flow through very evenly so we don't get stale uh, bitter smoke flavor on the cheese. Now you adjust the amount of smoke flavor you want. And I recommend that when you're first trying your cheese, that you only go a couple of hours and match it to what you prefer. I like my cheese really smoky. And I mean, this is a smoke channel. So I hope that's what you're going for. We're gonna go ahead and wrap the video up here because after it's done smoking for the four hours, it's gonna take a week in the back of the refrigerator to cure up and be ready to eat. So we'll take it out of the smoker, we'll put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the back of the fridge for a whole week and then it'll be ready to eat on your favorite cracker or whatever you choose to do with it. Thanks for watching. If you saw something you like in the video, there is affiliate links below and those I will get compensated for those 
and they won't cost you anything. So I appreciate it and have a great day.